Now we're going to take a look at what the Teeks calls industrialization and urbanization. If you remember a few videos back, we looked at the first industrial revolution. Now that was the time it started towards the end of the 1700s and really took off after the War of 1812. And that's when manufacturing changed, when it shifted from cottage industries to small factories. This is what people call the second industrial revolution. We'll write that here. The second industrial revolution. And it was in the late 1800s to early 1900s. And here is where we saw a shift from small factories to larger factories. And then later on, we're going to see because of that, because of the shift to larger factories, it helped to build cities. It helped to pull population from one part of the country. It helped to pull people, population growth, population shift from one part of the country to other parts of the country. And it really changed the landscape of the U.S. Right? So this is the second industrial revolution, 1800s to the early 1900s. In this video, it's going to be two videos. In this video, we're going to look at industrialization. In the next video, we're going to look at urbanization, which really was a result, one of the results of industrialization. Okay, so that's how these two things fit together. Right? That's what we're going to keep in mind. And this, this, this second industrial revolution was really made possible by some significant innovations. And those, some of those are listed in the teaks, and we're going to try to keep keep track of that and we we want to be aware of that okay we want to keep that stuff in our head right the first area was in steel first area was in steel production the process that you're going to want to know is the bessemer process you don't need to know how the bessemer process works you just need to remember what it's called the Bessemer process and that process helped to increase steel production which helped to make more steel available for railroad tracks and skyscrapers and bridges and more factories and that really helped to fuel growth right another industry was oil oil production and it was uh, refining Crude into kerosene. And this ability to pump crude oil out of the ground, that was new at the time. Now, you know, it's a big business, especially here in Texas. We take it for granted. But uh, back then, this was a big thing. New process to pump crude oil out of the ground and refine it into to kerosene this was before gasoline right? kerosene before gasoline and kerosene was used for cooking and heating and lighting right so this is oil production that's another area steel and oil production okay now another area where there was some major innovation was electricity electricity had already been discovered but there wasn't really a, a use for it. It was there, people knew about it, but what do you do with it? The invention of the electric light bulb by Thomas Edison changed that. Edison built, this was about 1879. This was the, uh, the light bulb. 1879 created a huge demand for electricity, and for power plants, which Edison and other people started to build, right, to meet the demand for this fast-growing demand for electricity. 
and there were some others. All right, and I'm just going to put this as these were really the big three. I'm going to put some others. Not that they were small by any means. Uh, we have the Telegraph. This was 1866. The first telegraph wire, now just get this, the first telegraph wire is really amazing to me, was laid across the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. It connected the U.S., I think it was in Massachusetts, to England. That's a long way. That's a lot of wire at the bottom of the ocean. Back in the middle end of 1866, middle end of the 1800s, that's really a feat of engineering, I think. And that helped to really speed, if you remember we looked at the telegraph earlier, how it sped communication across the U.S. Well, this really sped up communication from one continent to another continent, from the U.S. over to England. That was 1866. Uh, the next thing is the telephone, 1876. Alexander Graham Bell, telephone, if I can spell, 1876, the invention of the telephone kept speeding up communications, all right? Took a little, little while, took a while for telephones to become as popular, well, nowhere near as popular as they are today, as ubiquitous as they are today. But 1876, all part of this industrial revolution, all right? Telephone. We have the airplane. I mean, these are all really big things. The airplane. Uh, the Wright brothers, 1903. All right, the Wright brothers. The airplane, 1903. And the last thing we're going to put here is the moving assembly line. Henry Ford. Henry Ford moving assembly line, 1908. What was the moving assembly line? Well, assembly lines already existed. Remember the move that changed from cottage industries where one person would put together a product by himself or herself over time. I would put together each little piece of this product over time. Well, when I move that into a factories, I'm going to specialize in just one part of it and I'll pass that on to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. But it was still kind of slow, at least compared to a moving assembly line, when all of those parts are on a conveyor or some kind of belt or some kind of process, some kind of system that move that thing along. And as that car was coming down the line, I put the door on and somebody else put the windshield on and you know, so forth, right? That's how that worked. So these were some really major innovations that comprise the second industrial revolution. And what they did was, the result, there were really two results. Results it made by the end of the, of the 1800s, it made the U.S. being the world's leading manufacturer. At the beginning of the 1800s, the U.S. just had small, remember this, before the War of 1812, the U.S. didn't have a lot of manufacturing. It was still hemmed in by other countries from its relationship with England. If you remember going back to the American Revolution and mercantilism back then, so manufacturing was small. There was a lot of dependence on other countries for manufacturing products. Well, that started to change after the War of 1812, so before that, pretty small. And then it really started to take off and take off. And with this, by the end of the 1800s, the U.S. was the world's leading manufacturer. So we'll just say uh, U.S. leading manufacturer. By end of the 1800s. If you can read that, the U.S. is the world's leading manufacturer by the end of the 1800s. So a huge, huge change. And the other result connected to all this 
is urbanization. So with all of this change, all this innovation, all this movement towards factories and growth and manufacturing, people followed the jobs. And the jobs weren't growing out on farms. They were growing in cities and in factories. So there was a, an urbanization, a growth of, of cities and a movement away from farmland towards more urban areas. And that's what we're going to look at in this next video.